You are listening to the Life Coach School podcast with Brooke Castillo, episode number 373. Welcome to the Life Coach School podcast, where it's all about real clients, real problems, and real coaching. And now your host, Master Coach Instructor, Brooke Castillo. I'm so excited, my friends. Today, I have Katie Pulsifer on the podcast. First of all, who is she? She's amazing. She's my favorite guest I've ever had on the show. (laughs) Say that about all the people that I love the most. Katie's one of my employees. She's like a superstar employee. She runs everything behind the scenes in scholars for the coaches and the instructors. And she does applied coaching and she's a genius and I love her. And she probably does more stuff that I don't even know about in my own company. So I'm going to let her introduce herself and talk a little bit about herself. And then what we're going to talk about today is how to get hired as a life coach. Katie is someone who hires life coaches and she recommends and refers life coaches for other people to hire as well. I thought she'd be the perfect person to talk to us about if you're someone out there that wants to work for someone else, what are some good tips and processes to be thinking about in order to get hired. So welcome to the podcast, Katie. Thank you. Happy you're here. Tell us about yourself. Oh, let's see. Well, I found life coaching in 2012, actually, way back. I hired a coach after I sort of went as far as I could with therapy Mm. and loved everything about it so much so that I'm the person that left my corporate job and just started coaching people. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) But of course, along the way, I found you, I found the podcast, I signed up for certification back in 2016 and went along in my business doing all the things. I think I tried everything except a podcast Mm. and I'm so grateful for the webinars I did and the workshops and the events I went to and the networking and I'll put a booth here and I'll yeah. write a blog there. I mean, I tried everything and love it. loved it. And then I've told this story before, but I remember so distinctly, you did a podcast in November of 2017. I was on a walk. You're always mm. with me on my walks. Mm. And you talked about coaches who have a servant's heart Mm. that may not necessarily want to be entrepreneurs. And it was literally like I stopped dead in my tracks and I looked around. I mean, I thought you were right with me making this podcast for me because I was, I think this is what's happening here. Mm. I love coaching, but there's all of this entrepreneurship and business and marketing. I don't want to learn it. I don't want to study it. I don't want to get good at it. I just want to get really good at coaching. Mm. Love so that. I went from thinking, maybe I'm not doing it right to, oh no, there's a path for me. Yes. Brooke's going to show the way. Yes. And then fast forward a few months later and I got hired to coach full-time for the school. Dream that is true. awesome. I didn't heard that story before. Yeah. Amazing. So I- yeah. So, so three years ago, I started coaching full-time and then moved over into working for the school in Mm -hmm. a different capacity, hiring coaches Mm -hmm. two years ago. Helping them coach. Yeah. Yes. So tell us what your job, I know your job's changing right now, but tell us what your job has been and what it is now. Right now I'm running the applied coaching program. And then I'm also doing all of the hiring for our instructors and all of the hiring for our contracted coaches, but then also onboarding them, managing them and Mm -hmm. just ensuring that we deliver seamless coaching for all of our customers. I love it. So a lot of people, I think, come into coaching and they want to coach full time. And this is what I think happens. I think some people think entrepreneurship is easy. And Mm -hmm. so they want to be coaching full time and they think, oh, I'll just put some posts on social media And then I'll have tons of clients because I'm amazing. And I mean, I know that's what I thought. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) It didn't work. (laughs) And then you realize you're like, wait, well, when I first started a coach, we didn't even have the social media. All we had was like blogger. (laughs) Right. And it was really frustrating to me because I just wanted to coach. I was coaching people against their will. I was coaching people on the street. I was coaching anyone who would let me coach. And so I love that 
you can come through the school now in 2021, you can come through the school and get certified and not actually have to become an entrepreneur. Right. There are tons of organizations now that want to hire coaches. I would say once a week, someone says, I need a coach that can come work for me. Mm-hmm. I say, talk to Katie. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I don't do. know. I don't even know anymore. You have to talk to Katie. Yeah. And we're constantly hiring coaches. And mm-hmm. so I know that people that come through the school and people that are thinking about coming through the school who want to get hired would love to hear your perspective since you're in charge of the hiring of the coaches on what are some things that they need to be considering and be thinking about mm-hmm. in order to get hired. And then I'd love to have you talk a little bit about the training process, the onboarding process, that sort of thing. And then what is it like to be a coach? And you can talk about what it's like to be a coach at the school because you work with those coaches, but Mm -hmm. also like how you're referring coaches out as well Mm -hmm. when other CEOs are coming to us and saying, we need coaches that are trained Mm -hmm. by the school. How is that being handled? So cover all of that. Go. I'll just, I'll go. Okay. (laughs) So, I mean, I think that knowing is like the most important thing. And I knew it when you offered it on the podcast, Mm, you know, it's just that in us knowing that there may be a path. And of course that can change, Mm -hmm. but I think trusting your intuition, are you as jazzed and excited and motivated about marketing and entrepreneurship and coaching equally Mm. or is it more about coaching? And you have to kind of resolve that for yourself Mm -hmm. to know which path to choose. And you can always change your mind and do both in your lifetime, but just trusting your gut there and not necessarily following what everyone else is doing and really believing in yourself. I want to talk about that just briefly. There are coaches, for sure this would have been me, who go through certification, get hired by the school, Mm-hmm. coach their faces off mm-hmm. and then go start their own businesses. We have those. Yeah. I think it's genius. That's what I would have done. I think uh-huh. because in the beginning, just being able to coach that much all the mm-hmm. time, just honed your skills, get you. So you, you develop a level of mastery in your coaching that then you can shift to focus on building your business. The other piece that I think I'll be curious what you think about this. Coaching other people makes you get your own life so dialed, your own thoughts so dialed. Yeah. Absolutely. And the breadth of experience that you can get here at the school with the variety of clients that we have Mm -hmm. just reinforces that. It's so amazing. So yes, getting as much coaching as you possibly can before Mm -hmm. you move on to start your business, I highly recommend whether it's just doing it in your own life as much as you can or working for someone else. Because honing this skill is everything. You need the skill before you can build a business, Yep, right? right. To be able to coach yourself as well. So, Mm -hmm. So yeah. So it's so amazing to review applications and just Mm -hmm. see what people put forth. And it's so telling if Mm. they're very certain about their path or if they're sort of, I'm Mm. not really sure. And I'm maybe just going to come dabble over here and try this out and just see Mm. versus this is what I'm meant to do. And it's just so clear and you can just read it in their answers to their questions. You can Mm. see it in the way they complete the assignments that we give them for the application. It just really shines through. And then, you know, that's probably going to be a good fit. It's just someone Mm. that genuinely wants to be here or Mm. be in an organization and serve that organization. Yeah. I think a really good kind of tip for anyone considering applying, whether you're applying to the school or to a corporate coaching job or to one of our students who are hiring, Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to understand, I want to work for this organization because. Yes. Yes. Right. What is the reason why you want to be doing that? And always thinking about how can I serve? And this Mm -hmm. is true, whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're working for a corporation, your Mm -hmm. customers change, right? So if you're working for an organization, your organization is your customer. Mm -hmm. And that's important difference between recognizing that as an entrepreneur, your customers are your customer. Exactly. Right. And that's a big difference. So you'll be coaching my customers, Mm -hmm. my clients, if Mm -hmm. you work for me Mm -hmm. and I will be your customer. And so 
understanding what it is about the organization and how you can serve that organization. Now, if you work for me, serving me is all about serving my customers too. But you kind of have this middle person in there now that you have to consider when you're thinking about applying. So I think that's really good advice is to think about why this organization, why the Life Coach School Mm -hmm. or any other organization be really clear about that. Yeah. There's so many places to go be a coach now. So I love asking the question, why this school right now? The answers are fascinating and so telling for Mm. where the applicant is. Is it just to get a job or Mm. is it I had this experience in scholars. Scholars changed my life. I want to gift this Mm. back to a scholar in the future. I have to pay it forward. Mm. I'm meant to do this. I'm meant to be here. You know, it's just the contrast is very strong. So I love that. Okay. So you get an application, the clarity of why they want to work there Mm -hmm. and for any organization is super important. What else do you look for? Well, I'm also looking for like urgency. It's such a Mm. funny thing. Are applicants in a hurry, you know, because Mm. they've got some goals, which urgency, I just want to suss it out a bit. Like what's Mm. underneath that? What's the driving force? Because I don't know if it's going to be a good fit if they're in a hurry to get hired. Yes, So that's that's always something that I'm looking for. Their depth of knowledge of the programs we offer at the school is also, of course, very important. And Mm -hmm. one thing that I think maybe some applicants are confused about, which is fine, is we're not going to train you to be a coach (laughs) or a good coach. You have to come already skilled, Mm -hmm. confident in your coaching, Mm -hmm. and show up that way on day one because this Mm -hmm. isn't a place to get trained (laughs) <laughs> well, Once it is a place we do train you. We do train you, but not on the job as a contracted mm-hmm. coach. So, okay. So let's clarify that. Cause that's yeah. important. So yes. what I think Katie's saying here, and this is important because we do train you as a coach, but just like anything else, when you come in, you can show up. Mm-hmm. This is during your training mm-hmm. at a five or at a 10. Yes. And if you go through your training at a two, and your coaching skills aren't there, and then you apply to work for us, we're not going to train you how to be a coach at that point. Right. You need to be applying yourself all through your certification to be ready. Is that what you mean by that? Absolutely. Okay. And good. beyond. So yes, our certification qualifies our coaches for mm-hmm. sure. And they're ready to be hired. Some of them right after certification, which is oh, amazing. Wow. Okay. So the training is there. It's the attitude, it's the mindset, it's the belief in oneself, it's the confidence. And How much so you've practiced exactly. during certification. Yep. Yeah, so exactly. Mm-hmm. And some of the questions that I field are will I be getting lots of feedback? And the mm. answer is no. <laughs> okay. You're going to evaluate know. yourself. You're going to feedback on yourself. You are responsible for your own growth and development. So mm. are you up to that task? I love it. Yep. And that's what you want to come in thinking that you're ready to do. I love that. Okay. Yeah. So you get my application. You think I'm ready. I've really applied myself in certification. I've given you an example of my coaching. You're like, yes, this is a great candidate. Mm-hmm. And at that point, what happens? So great candidates who meet all of the criteria that we just talked about are invited to interview with me Okay, and we have a conversation and I ask all the questions that I didn't necessarily get answered in the application. And I just want to actually get to know the person, see if it's a good fit energetically. I'm also looking at setup, right? Tech, polish, presentation, lighting, sound, all of it matters because our standards are so high. So the okay. visual of this that- is important. Let's talk about this. Yeah. When you go to your interview, whether it's for the life coach school or any other corporation, you need to be presenting yourself as you will be presenting yourself to the customers. Mm-hmm. Right. So mm-hmm. that's such a good point. So brush your hair. <laughs> Have some lighting. Make sure your computer works beforehand. Yes. Um, What other things? What else are you looking for? Well, I'm just looking for, you know, there's always a bit of nervousness, which is totally fine. We can always work with that emotion. Never a problem. But 
how they're articulating answers, scholars' knowledge, coaching experience, background Mm -hmm. experience is also fascinating to learn about future goals, where they Mm -hmm. see themselves in a year, you know, so we just have a great conversation and then they coach me for 20 minutes. Oh, what? Oh (laughs) gosh, that's insane. I love it. I know. I love it. That's so good. So what are some of the mistakes you've seen? Have you seen any glaring mistakes that we could kind of apply to anyone applying for any job that are deal breakers? Well, I think people weed themselves out along the way Mm. if there are those mistakes. So if the application assignments are incomplete, they don't get to advance right away. If the tech isn't dialed, when I see them on the interview, it just gets canceled immediately. Oh, Okay. Wow. All right. High standards around here. Noted. Noted. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Okay. Yeah. So anything just kind of human and being a little bit nerd, you know, it's fine. It's totally fine. We have a great conversation and great time together. And I just want to get to know the people that want to work for the school. They Mm -hmm. may not get an offer after that first interview, Mm. but I always say the door never closes here. Mm. There's just some things that you need to go work on. I'm going to tell you exactly what they are. And then you come back when you're ready and we'll talk again. Amazing. That's amazing. We're an amazing company. I didn't even know that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, what kind of company do you go? You get an interview, you don't get an offer, but they're like, come back. Here's what you need to work on. I applied for so many jobs in my life and they're like, you just didn't get it. Yeah. You don't know why and you don't know what happened. So mm-hmm. that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I get hired. Mm-hmm. What is my onboarding experience? What is that like? Well, onboarding, we give you a very detailed document. We expect okay. you to read it know Mm -hmm. it inside and out, answer your own questions Mm -hmm. at all times, detailed instructions of how to get yourself set up on Zoom and Mm -hmm. where we meet in Slack and how to access our scheduler, where you can put your availability. It's all detailed there. Applicants usually turn all of that around in less than 24 hours. It's amazing. The ones that that's like dream come true to get hired. So it's like whatever it takes to start coaching as soon as possible. It's so fun. Yeah. So, okay. So I give you my availability. I'm going to be coaching in scholars. So I give Mm -hmm. you my availability. I say I'm open during these hours. Mm -hmm. We put that in a scheduler and then scholars start signing up. Start booking start booking with us. And you create your own schedule, whatever is best for you. If you want to work days, evenings, weekends, coach's choice, self-managing on your schedule and your time. I love it. Okay. There's a certain amount of hours that I need to schedule Mm -hmm. that I've committed to, whether I'm part-time versus full-time. And then my first appointment comes, Mm -hmm. I get on Zoom and I start coaching. You do. And I coach back to back or however I set it up, right? However I set it up, I'm coaching and I could be coaching all day. And what is that like? Well, it's amazing. So this is usually the month one journey. And I just spoke to three of our coaches who just had their one month mark today. So I know this really intimately and it's the same story. So they're so excited. Dream come true for many of them. Impossible goal is met to be working for the school. They're so excited. They have an amazing first couple of days coaching adrenaline rush. And then they take a break and then they start to wonder, do I belong here? Am I good enough? Like all all the doubt surfaces, of course, which we say is totally normal. It's totally part of the process. Get coached. So Mm. all of our coaches have to get coached every single week Mm. so that they have exceptional mind management in order to serve at the highest level. That is genius. I'm so smart for hiring you. <laughs> I will take full credit for everything you do. That's I'll amazing. Give you all the credit. But that makes sense. That's actually such great advice for anyone. If you're working for a corporation that doesn't require that, you should require that of yourself. Getting yes. your own mind cleaned out, overcoming your own doubts. That's beautiful. Yes. So there's some mentoring in that month one, just Mm -hmm. how's it going, checking in. We review some sessions as well, just to Mm -hmm. make sure we made a good decision and it's a good fit for the coach. Mm -hmm. Is it everything they thought it would be? 
And we watch them just get better and better and better. And then they meet with me 30 days in Mm -hmm. and we sit down and I say, how's it going? What do you think? (laughs) This is what we're seeing. And 10 times out of 10, I hear, thank you so much. Dream come true, privilege, honor. I can't believe how good it is. I love our scholars so much. I mean, it's just like chills. I get chills just thinking about it because I've talked to so many coaches and they're so in love with all of our scholars, which is so amazing, right? Because we love our coaches. Our coaches love our scholars. Our scholars love our coaches and they love us, right? And we just did a retreat here at the house and I only had eight people here. Mm -hmm. They were all scholars and every single one of them literally was in tears at how much scholars has changed their life. and. These are women and men that I had never met before. Mm. And I had such like a profound like moment. I was like talking to Rahul, my boyfriend, about this. I was like, it's so profound to know that there are people that we have trained in our training that are now coaching our clients and their lives are changing. And I've never even met them before. Mm. You know, it used to be just me and my clients. And now it's like, what is happening? It's so amazing. And the opportunity to be able to be a coach and not have to be an entrepreneur if you don't want to and have such high quality clients. Exactly. Is the other piece. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and scholars are so passionate about this work and they Mm. come to their sessions so prepared and so eager. Mm. And if they're not prepared, it's also fine because we have them. We know exactly what to do if they don't have a topic. Yeah. But it's just a, the perfect want match. I love perfect it. Perfect want match because scholars love the coaching and coaches love scholars. And so, so the magic in those 20 minute sessions is incredible. So we have a lot of people that come to us and say, hey, we want a life coach school trained coach. Mm-hmm. Who do you recommend? How do you handle that situation now? Well, because I know the, it's gotten out of hand. <laughs> well, I mean, in the beginning, there was a lot of that. And, you know, it was just easier to recommend based on people I had interviewed or things like that. And now, often the applications get forwarded to me and then I pass them along. I might share a few names, Mm, things like that. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. It's it's so reciprocal and so wonderful. And now there are so many coaches working for former students of yours Mm -hmm. that those coaches share the applications in our community as well. So there's a lot of opportunity out there. Yeah. So initially I had this idea. I remember I was in a mastermind. I was working in this and there was a lot of kind of disbelief in our industry back when I first started because people didn't even know what life coaching was. Mm. And there was like, you know, life coaching is more of a hobby than a real career. And it kind of was, we were still getting our footing, Mm. you know, 20 Mm -hmm. years ago. And I remember thinking like, I want to employ life coaches. I don't just want to help create them in the world. I want to employ them. I want it to be like this constant feedback mechanism. So the idea that someone could come and become a scholar and then become a certified coach, and then I hire them and pay them to be a certified coach, which then pays for their certification, but also helps another scholar who then may become a certified coach. Like, that whole ecosystem that we've created there is just, it's like so magical to me. And many people go on and start their own businesses. And of course, you know me, I love entrepreneurship. I'm all in for both, but being able to create this kind of idea in our industry. And I was going to say the first time I had one of my students who had built her business big enough to come to me to say, I need to hire three coaches that are trained by Mm -hmm. the school. My head like exploded. I was like, what is happening? It's It's happening. It's happening. It's so good. And so I always love to see the different things that are happening in our industry now and to see coaches who don't want to be entrepreneurs becoming, you know, really important parts of other coaches' organizations. Mm -hmm. It just Mm -hmm. like brings so much joy to my heart. And they don't want to go anywhere. They just want to work. They want to coach. That's their life. They're Mm -hmm. super happy. And then Mm -hmm. also to have coaches that have come through the school and coached with us for a couple of years and now are very successful Mm -hmm. entrepreneurs now. It's like- exactly The idea that there's no one path. Yes. 
anymore. Exactly. You know, it's just, exactly. there's so many ways to do this and it sort of brings us full circle. It's like only, you know, what that path is for you. Right. And so the options are now endless, which is incredible. Okay. So let's talk briefly to a coach who may be discouraged. Maybe mm. someone's gotten certified and mm-hmm. they've been trying to get a job as a coach with an organization mm-hmm. and they're struggling. What would be your advice to them? Yeah. So of course, get coaching on mm-hmm. your thoughts. First, <laughs> yes. Bad, um, yeah. First and foremost. But also, I think if you have been given any feedback, I remember mm-hmm. learning this very, very early on, mm-hmm. is just like, how could this feedback be true? Mm-hmm. What is here that's true? Like if I was open and receptive to what's been offered and mm-hmm. areas where I could improve and I was willing to embrace all of it, mm-hmm. then how might I grow as a coach? Am I mm-hmm. willing to put in the work and keep going? We have so many people on our team that applied four times. Wow. That's amazing. So don't give up, my friends. Never, 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 never. If it is the dream, then those are just the stepping stones along Mm. the way. So, Mm -hmm. and the best part is you become a better coach in the process. Like there's no downside if you're practicing and getting coached. So I love so many things about what you said. The first thing that I'm thinking is like, I love that it's so hard to get hired (laughs) <laughs> at the school because it means our coaches are amazing. Mm-hmm. I love that it's hard to get hired at the school. I mean, for some people it is because it requires you to coach yourself and never give up and apply all the tools that you've learned mm-hmm. by going through the school. And the other piece of that is just remembering like if you haven't gotten hired yet, it's like you haven't made a sale yet as an entrepreneur. Exactly. You haven't considered what is an irresistible offer to your customer. And If you want to get hired at the life coach school, we're your customer. If you want to get hired at someone else's organization, they're your customer. What are they looking for? What do they most need? And I think that every single person that works at the school as a contractor, as an employee has to be impeccable. And I just want to kind of end with this because I think it's great advice and code of conduct for anyone working as an entrepreneur or as an employee at any organization. So can you just briefly go through some of those expectations that we have that may seem obvious, but Mm -hmm. aren't? (laughs) Yeah. Well, of course, it's the tech piece that we've already covered and Mm -hmm. talked about, but it's also the way I think you hold yourself, conduct Mm -hmm. yourself, treat yourself. Yes. It's the way you articulate concepts and the way you're able to coach, of course, has to be impeccable, Mm -hmm. but it's also being in emotional adulthood as well. It's receiving feedback and implementing it. Like I just Mm -hmm. said, looking for what's true here and how I can learn. Yep. And also, I think what's now made this particular team, 55 coaches we have now, so successful and so strong, is that they're always thinking, how can we do better tomorrow? How can we serve scholars even better tomorrow? So the ideas, the suggestions, the process improvements, they're just always thinking about the customer they're serving. I love, love, love this. And I think it all comes down to self-responsibility, taking Mm -hmm. responsibility for yourself, not blaming, but owning Mm -hmm. the result that you want to create for yourself in your own life and showing up in a way that demonstrates that. I think- whether you want to be a coach or whether you're applying to be a coach or you're running your own business, or even if you're working in corporate as a coach Mm -hmm. with another portion of your job and you're getting certification to help you with that, I think how you show up in your life, I think it includes how you dress, how you take Mm -hmm. care of your appearance. Do you show up on time? Mm -hmm. Do you take responsibility? Do you ask this question that you're saying, how can I make this better? And how can I serve my customer more? Those Mm -hmm. are all things that are going to serve you Mm -hmm. in your life overall for everything. And so many people that come and work at the school, whether they're working as a coach or an employee, it's so crazy. Like sometimes we have to let people go and they'll send me thank you notes. Like Thank you so much for teaching me how to be professional, for teaching me how to be impeccable, for teaching me how to show up and take responsibility for myself. And so 
that's nice that you learn that on the job with us, but I feel like that's something you should bring to every position that you have as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So good. So thank you so much, Katie, for coming on. Oh, we're talking about the tips on how to get hired as a life coach and the opportunities that are out there. I think we have lots of coaching opportunities at the life coach school. A lot of our students are hiring, but there are more and more corporations that are hiring coaches to come in and coach their staff and their customers. So I want to just as a tip at the end to recommend if that is something that appeals to you, we've had a lot of coaches who are pitching their coaching services to corporations that don't even know they need it and getting hired. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. There's tons of opportunities out there. If someone wants to apply to work Mm -hmm. at the school, what do they do? Katie, tell them. Well, if they are one of our certified coaches, they mm-hmm. go to the certified site and find the application there. Beautiful. So it's easy, fill out, then I will be in touch with next steps. So Okay. Sounds great. So if you want to work for us, go ahead and go there. If you aren't certified yet and you're interested in looking into certification for maybe eventually working for us, go to lifecoachschool.com forward slash certification. Thanks again, Katie, for coming on the podcast. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you all next week. Take care. Bye. Hey, if you enjoy listening to this podcast, you have to come check out Self Coaching Scholars. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all this material and we apply it. We take it to the next level and we study it. Join me over at thelifecoachschool.com forward slash join. Make sure you type in the the T H E life coach school dot com forward slash join. I'd love to have you join me in self coaching scholars. See you there.